Kia and good evening everybody. My name is Max, I'm the host of The Black Jersey and today we've got a bit of a spicy wee topic about the All Blacks to get into. We're going to cover who I believe should be starting at lock for the All Blacks. As you all know, it's kind of obvious that Ian Foster, injury permitting, is gonna pick Brody Retallick and Sam Whitelock as his locking combo. They have been a locking pair ever since 2012, the first year of Retallick's international rugby and the first year of Steve Hansen being the All Blacks head coach. Sam Whitelock, as it currently stands, is the only current All Black who has been around since before Ian Foster was part of the All Blacks setup. So it's kind of safe to say he's a pretty experienced guy he's currently third on the all-time list for most caps for the all blacks but we're going to challenge things just a wee little bit we're going to go over the stats of every single all black lock that ian foster has kept so far he's kept six locks during his tenure as the head coach for whatever reason um, they have gotten to the squad so yeah i'm just going to address the elephant in the room before we cover everybody. Patrick Tuipolotu, who was the Blues captain in 2021, is currently over in Japan on a sabbatical, and he has played over 40 tests so far in his career. As you can see, he's quite an experienced player. He is still eligible for selection, though, because he has signed with New Zealand Rugby through to 2025. Um, he will be 34 years old in 2027, so it's entirely possible he could be with the All Blacks for a very long time. He's just earning his money right now. So just going to address the fact that Tui Pilotu is still eligible for selection. I don't watch the Japan top league though, so I'm not going to get too heavy into him. Now that we've talked about Tui Pilotu, as you can see, here's the lock depth chart. This is um, the amount of minutes that each player has played under Ian Foster from 2020 to 2021 so far. And as you can see, there's quite a variety of minutes. I've just done a singular depth chart as all six players have played minutes in both locking jerseys. None of them have played minutes on another jersey so far apart from Scott Barrett though. So yeah, the first player we're going to talk about is Josh Lord. I have quite a few notes about all these players. We're going to run through their Super Rugby stats so far for the year with the exception of Tui Pelosu. So Josh Lord, as you can see, is dead last on the depth chart apart from that yellow card there. Lord has only played 83 minutes of Test Rugby so far and he's so yeah, two Test caps. The guy is six foot eight and 112 kgs. He's bulked up from 106. That was um, his weight when he debuted for the Chiefs. I first saw Lord playing rugby in 2020. He was 19 years old, starting for Taranaki, and won the Ranfurly Shield with them. I commented after he debuted for the Chiefs that the black jersey was next. I just did not expect Josh Lord to debut so soon after I made that comment. So far this season, he's played six games and um, played 334 minutes for the Chiefs. He's also run 72 meters, beat 40 defenders off 30 carries he's made 28 passes four offloads and 50 out of his 54 tackle attempts so his tackle percentage is 93 percent all of these players have very high tackle percentages, which is a very encouraging sign. Lord's also won six turnovers, and I really like the way he uses that height. Um, if he was in frame, he'd be way, way up here because of his height. But yeah, he uses it really well to make the turnovers. He often strips the ball off his opponents, and that's a real selling point for me about Josh Lord. So even though he's dead last for minutes played, we're going to see a lot more of him going forward, I think. Now we're moving over to Tupo. Vai, his Chiefs and Taranaki teammates. So Vai's played 389 minutes of Test Rugby so far in his career. After he became
am the first All Black to be born in the 21st century. So yeah, 11 test caps and he's 11.6% of the depth chart. Um, at 6 foot 6 and 118 kgs, he's probably one of the smallest guys in here and he's played a bit of blindside flanker for the Chiefs as of late. He's played 5 Super Rugby games so far this season and his running game is off the charts. Something I've noticed a lot is that the old boys club of the All Blacks seem to go to ground immediately when they're carrying. This guy though, he doesn't stay down. He's made 118 metres from his 337 minutes of Super Rugby this year. That has allowed him rather to beat 5 defenders and make 2 clean breaks. He is the only lock with a test cap in Super Rugby right now that has made a clean break this season, so good stuff. Um, that's off 33 carries and he's also made 22 passes, so that's quite respectable, though it's not as high as Lord's passes. But he's also made 2 offloads and his tackle percentage is 89%. He's managed to get 42 out of 47 attempts and he's also won 3 turnovers this season, so not as many as Lord, but yes, as you can see, the running game's going nuts. He's had a bit of time in the All Blacks camp so far, and now he's set to capitalize on all that experience he's gained from learning to the experienced players. He knows he is a class player as well, and it drives him to succeed. I can't wait to see him getting even better. Uh, yes, yeah, Scott Barrett. Yeah, yeah, about him. My, my opinion on Scott Barrett's kind of done... A bit of a 180 as of late. Scott Barrett was red carded for shoulder charging another player the other day and has been banned for four weeks as he is a repeat offender. As you can see from the footage on screen, he has received a red card at test level before, so that's not too cool. Barrett does take up quite a portion of the depth chart as well, as you can see. 17.1%, he's played 576 minutes of test rugby for Fozzie. His total caps is 48 tests, and he's 6 foot 6 and 111 kg, so he's definitely the smallest of these locks. Yeah, I'm I'm not too sold on Barrett anymore. I was really backing him as a potential candidate to captain the All Blacks in the future, but he just hasn't really adjusted well to the laws that have been in place for five years now. After the World Rugby framework has been in there that long, I'm just not too sold on him. I will tell you his stats though, just to balance things out. He's played 6 games and he's played the most minutes of any of these locks with 430 Super Rugby minutes. So that's 67 metres run and 2 defenders beaten off 33 carries. But he's definitely made a bit more of an impact running than Lord and Barrett so far as we can see. Barrett has though made the most tackles of any of these locks and he's quite far up there when it comes to tackles in the overall ladder. He's made 72 from 78 at 98, sorry, non, uh, non, not 98%, 92%, and he has made 5 turnovers as well. He is a bit of a workhorse, but do you really want to take on somebody that's been red carded multiple times in their professional career? I'm, I'm just not sure about it, guys. Like... I'm just not sure. We'll move on to Brody Retallick. I covered him in my previous video. Retallick, I have expressed my opinion that because of the fact that he's had a lot of long-term injuries and he's currently out with a broken thumb, it may be getting to the point where you can't over-rely on him. England's having a similar thing going on right now with Manu Tuolangi, and Ireland over the last few years have had similar incidences with the likes of Connor Murray missing a lot of game time in 2018 and 2020. Yeah, Retallick is definitely the biggest of these locks. 6 foot 8, 123 kgs, and he's played 92 test caps. He takes up a massive portion of this lock's depth chart as well, 23% of it to be exact, and all 772 minutes of his place on the chart were played in 2021. Super Rugby, he's going to be returning in about mid-May, I would say. They said he would be back after six to eight weeks after his broken thumb happened. Retallick did play 308 minutes before he got injured, and he's run 65 metres and one defend beaten off 27 carries so far this season. He's also made 20 passes and four offloads. The biggest selling point for Retallick for the coaches, though, will be the fact that he's completed all 41 
one of his tackle attempts, leaving him with a 100% of a ratio that is super, super cool to see. And I'm very glad to see that someone has not missed a single tackle so far this season. It's nothing short of incredible. Again though, we just come back to those injuries. I'm kind of unsure. He has also made five turnovers, just a note. And the last player, obviously, Sam Whitelock. He is one of only four players that has played over a thousand minutes of Test Rugby for Ian Foster. So as you can see on the depth chart, he's played 1,026 minutes. So that's 30.5% of the Locks depth chart. He's just played massive minutes. The fact that he has a broken finger right now is hard of me to say. It's kind of good timing because we need him to have a lot of energy for the test season. I'd also like to see him miss the end of year tour in 2022 so we can keep him fresh for 2023 in the World Cup as he's probably going to be the captain. So yeah, he's only played three games of Super Rugby so far this season. He's 6 foot 8 and 170, um, 117 kgs rather. So yeah, it does take a lot of energy to get that big frame around. Um, so yeah, 211 minutes played, 29 meters, one defender beaten off 18 carries. So he has made quite a few carries, even though he's only played three games so far this season. He's also made 11 passes, one offload, and he's made 35 out of his 38 tackle attempts, leaving him with a ratio of 92%. So what I want to say about these locks, guys, is that it's quite competitive, and even though there's a clear gap on the locking depth chart things are a lot closer than you would think because of the fact that scott barrett has had his disciplinary problems lately and um also that red card from 2019 and the fact that Brody vitalik's had a lot of long-term injuries i would like to see sam whitelock paired with tupo vay Josh Lord has played two tests, but I'm not sure if he's ready to star against Ireland in the mid-year tests. I'd also like to see Patrick Tui Pelotu come in off the bench to support those guys to kind of get his body back up to speed for the Rugby Championship. Giving Brody Vitalik time missed off will be great and it'll prevent him from getting injured. Maybe that'll help him get all the way to 2023. So yeah guys, um, if I was picking the All Blacks set up today, I would make a very different decision to Ian Foster, I would get Sam Whitelock in as the captain in the number 5 jersey, and I'd pair him with Tupo Vai at number 4 with Patrick Tuipolotu off the bench. We all know exactly what Ian Foster is going to do if everyone is injury free. We know he will start Whitelock and Retallick and put Barrett on the bench. So yeah, I do have a different opinion to the All Blacks head coach. I want to hear your guys' opinion in the comments as well. I replied all the comments you send in. Once again, a big thank you to my seven patrons who support me. If you're keen to just make a one-off um, tip, you can head to my PayPal tip jar. You're also able to visit the article version of this video on the Black Jersey's official website. The website's been out since January this year, and I'm very happy to now have an article with over 100 reads. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Nearly at 2,000 subscribers. I want to hit five by the end of this year. Thank you so much for watching the video, and God bless all of you.